Welcome to this edition of The Forum. I'm your host, Sheila Evans. We have a great show in store for you today with an outstanding lineup of guests. We get our show started today by talking with Lynn Wooten, Director of Development with Cape Fear Habitat for Humanity. She will give us all the details on this year's turkey trot that will be held on Thanksgiving morning. Then we sit down with Lucy Vasquez, Director of Amigos International. The Festival Latino is the program's annual fundraiser and she joins us to explain how those funds are used in our community. And finally, Duke Wallen joins us to talk about the career and technical high school the school system is planning. He will give us an overview of the school and tell us how our students will benefit. We've got a great edition of the forum for you today and we'll get started right after this short break. Now it's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 132. That's how many batters struck out four times in one game last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's how many kids have witnessed bullying. Three out of four. That's not a good stat. No, it's not, but it can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. Let's see what's for lunch today. What are you having? Tacos, great. We had meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and peas. What's this? Looks good. We had beef stew, noodles, pudding, and whole milk. You know, today's school lunches are more nutritious and have better variety. They're totally awesome. It is definitely not your parents' school lunch anymore. A message from the American School Food Service Association. I am joined by Lynn Wooten. She's the Director of Development for the Cape Fear Habitat for Humanity. And Lynn, we're here to talk about an event that you're promoting. Yes, we Tell are. Tell us about it. Well, we have our 12th annual Turkey Trot, which will be held on Thanksgiving morning this year at Wrightsville Beach. And it is a 5K uh, run and a walk mm -hmm. and a mile walk. And all of the proceeds go to support the mission for Cape Fear Habitat. How much does it cost to participate? It's forty dollars for if you're going to run, okay. and twenty dollars for uh, the walkers. Okay. Yeah. And um, how many people do you expect to attend this year? Well, last year we had over twenty-four hundred, which was really exciting, and we are hoping to surpass those numbers this year. And what happens with the proceeds from the race? The proceeds go directly into uh, supporting the mission of Habitat, which is we are just building houses to help those that need affordable housing and cannot get a conventional loan. Okay. Uh, so we uh, put all of that money into the building of the homes. What else makes this event extra special? Oh, it's really exciting because it's, a, it's become a family tradition for so many people. We have people to dress up mm -hmm. in different types of costumes. We have um, exciting awards, and uh, it's just uh, it's just a fun time to be out and about. And we make jokes about it. You know, if you run, then you can eat whatever you want to for lunch. You well, don't I'm have to worry about true. it. That's true. That's true. I did it for the first time last year with my family. Did you? I did. Great. I did. Saw some man running. He dressed up as a pilgrim, <laughs> and he was wearing dress shoes, and that's what he ran in. And he did run I in I thought he shoes. should win a prize just for that. It was, it was a very nice day last year. We had great weather. The weather very was beautiful. Very social. You will see a billion people you know. Don't you agree? I do agree. I do agree. It's just, like I said, family tradition. So many people look forward to this. In fact, I was the last one in the family, and they were waiting at me at the finish line. It missed me because there were so many people. I was like, you know, guys, um, tell us about a little bit about Habitat for Humanity and how it works. Sure. Well, like I said, we, you know, we build houses and we build houses to actually sell to people who want to buy a home, who want to be homeowners but cannot get traditional loans for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And um, to be able to be a part of the program, the homeowners have to uh, put in sweat equity hours so they help us build the home. They have to go through homeowner classes, learn how to uh, handle their bills, what to do, how to handle maintenance with their homes and then they purchase the home. Right now we are at a 0% interest rate. It, wow, can't so do better than that. You can't do better than that. <laughs> but it is definitely a low uh, affordable interest rate. And uh, so Now do these families continue to be involved in the program? Uh, they do, most do. Some people do, some don't. Okay. But we do see a lot of people that continue. And uh, one of the things that they do is they refer us to other people that they know 
to be to become our family partners, and that is a big uh, a big part of what we are trying to do now is to get new family partner members. So if there, if there's anyone interested in becoming a homeowner and they don't have the means mm -hmm. to uh, get a conventional loan, we would love to talk with them. Very good. So. What other ways can people get involved with your program? Well, we, we have uh, a lot of our work is done by volunteers on our construction sites, and that is how we keep our prices as low and we're able to offer some of the, uh, the things that we do offer. And uh, we have restores. I don't know uh, if you are aware of our restores, mm -hmm. but we have people to donate to the restores, and we have volunteers that work in our restores. We also, uh, money donations goes a long ways for us, and then just sponsorships for events like our turkey trot or any other events that we have. And um, how can people in the community support the event? Well, we would love to have everyone show up. We have to register, of course. We, you can do that by going to our website. Mm -hmm. and, um, but you can, again, sponsor the, you can sponsor the event. You can volunteer to work at the event. But we'd love for everyone just to come out and be a part of the event. It is a lot of fun. Would it be appropriate for our high school students that need volunteer hours for Absolutely. Beta Club or National Honor Society to volunteer? Absolutely. And how would they do that? They could, if they would go to our website, uh, look up the Turkey Trot, or even go to our page that shows our staff and look at our volunteer coordinator call, and we can work with them through that process. Do you find that you have many students doing work on the homes? We have students that want to do work on the homes, but we have an age limit. So they have to at least be 16 years old okay. to work on the site. And then so high school students, pretty high much. High school students. And then, of course, if they are to be on ladders, they have to be 18 years or older. Okay. So. And, and I would assume some learning takes place there. It does. We do all of the training on site. And uh, so if, if you don't feel like you can climb a ladder, then we have other things that you can do and we do all the training. We do have also a collegiate challenge that we have every year where we have a group of college students that uh, builds a home. So college students from here? Well, they come from all over. We okay. do have UNCW that participates, but we have, uh, we open it up and the schools that want to come to this area will apply and we build a house through uh, those people coming and volunteering. So they like come in for the weekend? They come in for the week. Or, uh, for a week? For a week. Is it generally in the summer or spring break or something? It's usually spring break okay. and we have housing for them. We oh, have, nice. for the most part, the food is uh, volunteered, good. And donated, good, good, good. and uh, they come in and work for a week. Oh, that's exciting. So maybe I think four or five weeks we have groups and then by the end of that time the house is completed. Now, if you have someone that just really wants to get involved in the process and they're not going to touch a hammer, because they shouldn't maybe, right? is there something for them to do on site when a uh, house is being built? Absolutely. We, we just, even if you can bring nails or uh, if someone needs something and they say, can you go get this, just being a gopher. No, that's true. And another thing is uh, lunches. Uh, we like to provide lunches for our volunteers, and we are, you know, we always have a need for groups to volunteer to bring lunches onto the sites. Very good. Now, remind us one more time how you sign up for the turkey trot. You go to our website, www.capefairhabitat.org, and there is a big link on the home page that will give that information. Very good. Well, then, thanks for sharing that, and maybe I'll see you out there Thanksgiving I'll Day. I will be looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. We got a real porker of a house here. Get in there and waste some energy. There's no insulation, boss. It's hog heaven. Leaky windows, too. This is going to be a breeze. Perfect. Go wild and waste some wattage. <laughs> Time to tan. Oh, there's hot water for just one pair of pants. <sighs> My kind of place. Wow, this thing's so old, it's going to take me hours to get dry. <laughs> Keep wasting. They'll never know what hit them till they get the energy bill. <laughs> what the? Boss, they're home. And they've got energy efficient balls. <laughs> You've got the power to get rid of energy hogs. You can help your parents add insulation, put in Energy Star appliances, and lots of other things to make your home hog free. Find out how at energyhog.org and play fun games too. Oh, retreat! Retreat! Go to energyhog.org and get the energy hogs out of your home. Hey, wait for me! What state am I? I'm the largest state east of the Mississippi River. 
My nickname is the Peach State. The 1996 Summer Olympics were held here. Do you know who I am? If you guessed Georgia, you're right. I received statehood in 1788. This United States factoid has been brought to you by New Hanover County Schools on the Learning Network of the Cape Fear. I am joined by Lucy Vasquez, and she's director of Amigos International. So Lucy, this past weekend you had the Festival Latino, undoubtedly a success. What happens with the funds from that program? It's a fundraiser for Amigos International. Okay. We have uh, several programs that we work with. Our biggest one, and probably most time consuming, money consuming, is Centro Latino. Okay. That's our activity and crisis center. Okay. And uh, we hold English classes, we do tutoring for the children, and um, we do crisis intervention. And uh, we have a place where the Latino community can come and feel safe uh, to tell us what they're going through and believe that we are going to help them okay. uh, get so, through so it. So you all have an office and if yes. somebody's in crisis they can call the office and come in and get some help? Yes, exactly. In their native language? Yes, exactly. Very good. Yes, and uh, we are bilingual or trilingual. We also speak Portuguese so we can help that. But I mean just just them being Latinos or speaking Spanish is not a criteria. If anybody needs help, really, we'll, oh, sure, we'll be willing sure. to help. But yes. how nice for somewhere to go where somebody, bottom yes. line, understands what you're trying yes, to say. Yes, exactly, and understands the community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's one thing to go and tell somebody your situation, and it's another thing to go where someone understands the whole big picture and not just your little situation. Gotcha. It's, do you problem. find that you have to help families navigate things in the school system? Uh, yes, at times we have had those. Things are getting better. Okay. I mean, since when we first opened Amigos International and Centro Latino, we had lines a mile long, you know, mm -hmm. of people needing so much help because there were no bilingual um, personnel okay. in any agency, organization, office, business, you name it. There were very little bilingual people. Uh, that's changed. Um, people have realize that it's a very important component of whatever um, Do you find you that many of the school forms have been trans translated into Spanish for uh -huh. folks? Yes, they have done that. They hold um, monthly meetings where they have a bilingual person explaining things. Um, things have gotten a lot better. It is it, Having someone to communicate to them in their language, wherever it might be, it helps a lot. It really is the problem solver. Gotcha. What else do you do that might be a function of people being in the school system? Function of being in the school system, we, we help them with the tutoring. Oh, okay. uh, what happens is uh, the kids are going to pick up the English language fairly quickly. Right. I mean, within months, they're already speaking it. And within a year, they've dominated, it almost seems like. But the parents are not in the same situation. And a lot of these parents, we have a working community, working class community. Mm -hmm. They're here to work. And uh, a lot of them are not educated, so even if they knew the language, they wouldn't know how to help them with the homework. And um, reading to them is so important for them to hear the words, how they're pronounced, how it mm. sounds. Right. It's n sometimes not possible for the Latino community. So they bring their kids, and we do a lot of reading is what we do. Reading is so important for them to understand what they are reading, to be able to um, say it clearly, for them to hear it clearly, and it helps them with the rest of the um, subjects in, in school. So do parents come with their kids and they yes. read together? We have the parents come in mm -hmm. with the kids and we read with them, we hear the kids read. Um, they listen, you know, we explain to them sometimes, look at when you see this happening, this is, sometimes mm -hmm. we help them understand how, especially with, when it's very simple elementary homework, this is when this you see this page this is what they need to do and we'll explain it to the parents that's very helpful because yes. they probably want to be a part of yes the school you know participation but don't understand it necessarily yes, it's, and, and and obviously it's important to them because they're going out of their way to go somewhere to get the help that their kids need does this happen after school in the evenings mm -hmm. or? after school okay. in the evenings yes so it's a busy place all day long yes yeah, usually it is very busy how many staff do you have? Uh, we don't have staff. We're all no. volunteers. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we, we just uh, work with the UNCW and Cape Fear Community College with uh, staffing. 
Are they yeah. students that come yep, in? Yeah, students, and people majoring in Spanish, Spanish. Uh -huh, foreign languages, uh, child psychology, child Right, whatever. right, right. Are you open Monday through Friday? We're open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. Yeah, that's what, those are our hours. Gotcha. And folks can come in after school, and call if they need help for anything. Yes, and they can call 910-341-0007. Um, always looking for new volunteers, people that have a really uh, strong command of the Spanish language. Gotcha. Now you had uh, mentioned, we talked about the festival just a tiny bit, but you said that this year you guys added some more countries that were going to be represented. Can yeah. you speak to what they were? They were Bolivia. We have oh, okay. not had Bolivia. We've, a few years ago we had Bolivia uh, do a dance performance and mm -hmm. they were wonderful, but we've never had Bolivian food. And that was uh, an addition, and they, it was wonderful. It was great to have them and hope to keep, continue to add more countries and continue to have the ones we, we have, keep them. Very good. Always a good time in the fall. Yes. Well, thanks for coming in and sharing this information. Thank you. And we'll you. be back in a few minutes right after these messages. Kids will spend 57 minutes making me go splat. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. I am joined by Duke Wallen. He is the new program coordinator at the new CTE High School. Um, tell us a little bit about the CTE High School and what it's going to look like. Well, the CTE High School is a concept that uh, was established with a partnership with Cape Fear Community College and uh, Pender County Schools. Um, our schools uh, have career and technical education programs already and um, we're looking to expand upon what's offered. Um, so through this partnership uh, with Cape Fear and Pender, uh, we've established a location uh, in the northern part of the county, which okay. will be a, a, re a regional setting, and uh, where students will be able to come to get uh, industry credentials, some training, um, job shadow experience, uh, uh, work-based learning opportunities, um, basically an expansion of what's, um, uh, what great programs we already have in the county. Okay. Now, I've been to Pender High School before, and they have a, like a vocational wing. Right. Um, the shampoo bowls for the girls to get their um, cosmetology license. Well, they have newer or different opportunities, I guess, in the partnership, or do you think it's an expansion? It will be an expansion. So it'll be a CTE high school with without actual career and tech programs on campus. There will be some business, some agriculture, uh, even some uh, uh, trade and industry classes, um, but the, the foundation classes will be uh, taken at the, um, the comprehensive or technical, uh, comprehensive or traditional schools. Okay. And then students will have an opportunity to come to that school in two ways. They can come as a freshman. Um, they will take, uh, if they don't know what they want to do as a career, they'll um, have an opportunity to take a survey class. Okay. And in that class, they'll go out to um, uh, Cape Fear Community College, um, look at some of their technical classes, and also go out to um, industry and actually see hands-on real world uh, experiences and if that's something that they want to explore as a career. So again, as I said that the technical high school won't have technical classes, they'll actually be instructed by Cape Fear 
instructors. So the technical component will actually be on the campus of Cape Fear Community College, either at the North Campus or there's five programs in the downtown campus that students will be able to uh, uh, um, participate in. Very interesting. Why do you think we need a CTE high school? Uh, well, um, right now, uh, some of our, uh, and this school is based and focused on uh, industry needs for our community. Okay. Uh, and, and that's why Cape Fear exists, because it helps um, f our future workforce in our area. Residential and commercial construction is going to be one of our biggest um, uh, programs, probably, okay. along with health sciences. Oh. Those are some of our leading uh, economic needs in our area. Right now, there's 4,000 uh, uh, apartment complex uh, units being mm -hmm. um, constructed, and our area doesn't have the labor force that's needed. Um, so creating this pipeline from high school to the community college right to the business and industry is going to allow us to um, provide our own uh, workforce, opposed to right now they're having to bring people in from Raleigh and Fayetteville to come work because we just don't have um, uh, the folks here. And how will the high school be different than taking the courses that are available now? So, um, so there's again, there's two um, different uh, entry points. Um, they'll be able to they'll be able to go to their uh, traditional school, and this will be an expansion. So, um, there is um, career and college promise. It used to be called Huskins, where students oh, yeah. can uh, can go to the uh, community college mm -hmm. tuition free and take some of the classes. Our early colleges um, have this concept, but they're mainly for college transfer. Sure. The technical high school is going to provide the uh, the training in the technical components. So the certificate programs in plumbing and welding and construction and cosmetology, you have diploma programs and then a, um, potentially an associate of applied science, which would then transfer to a four-year school if you cho cho choose to do that. So would they spend half their day at their traditional high school and then bus up? Or uh, no, this will no? be uh, this will be a uh, full uh, school. Um, they will be able to take their English, math, so science, those cores. Uh, all those core <laughs> um, classes. Um, that will actually be a little bit different than the early college because students will be able to participate in extracurricular and athletics. Um, in the first couple of years, because our numbers are going to be low, um, we'll probably they'll have the opportunity to take those um, sports programs and participate at their home-based school. Um, where they would have gone if they would have attended that school, oh, um, gotcha. Hoggard, or even in the Pender, three Pender County high schools. Uh, and then as the enrollment grows, uh, we'll actually look to um, provide our own athletic teams, probably be a 1A school. Oh, wow. Transportation, how's that going to work? Um, so right now, because we'll be housed on the north campus of Cape mm -hmm. Fear Community College, New Hanover County school students will um, share the transportation plan with the Wilmington Early College students. So right now there's oh. already a plan in place for uh, WEX uh, students to go to their uh, home base school and then be transferred. It would just basically follow that same transportation plan, at least for the first two years. And after school activities, they pretty much have to get themselves there if they want to play football, marching band, whatever. If they're looking to do that okay. at their traditional school, more than likely. Now, there will be a bus service going back to the school. Um, but oh, those, that's a good point. You're right. <laughs> um, but, however, those uh, for games and things like that, they're going to have to provide their own transportation. Um, that's just going to be that, uh, um, you know, that... For those students, it's going to be um, uh, one of those uh, things that you'll have to decide, is this going to be right for me to participate in this? Mm -hmm. um, I may have to substitute um, playing at sports if I want to concentrate on my career. Right. So who can enroll and how do you enroll? Uh, our first year, uh, we're looking to have 40 to 60 freshmen. Okay. Uh, and then we'll add an additional uh, 80 to 100 uh, in the second year. And then it'll be open to all students, all grade levels, um, grade 9 through 12 in the district. So students may go to uh, Laney High School, and in their senior year, they say, well, I only have um, English 4 left. But I want to start concentrating and get some free college 
uh, credit and so forth and start my career early. So they may transfer to the technical school and, and take their English at the technical school and be a graduate of the technical school. So we're going to start off with, um, f like I said, 40, mm -hmm. uh, 40 60 students. Um, by year five, we're looking to have 300 plus students um, at the school. There is an application process uh, for students. Um, that's going to come out right at the first of the year. Students will have to um, apply online uh, through an application. Uh, they'll have a career essay. Um, there will be an interview um, with uh, the, an administrator from the school and then um, followed up uh, with a counselor recommendation from their middle school. Very nice. So not unlike the early college process so much. It'll be very, well, yeah, it'll be very similar nice. to that of the early college. Yeah. Very good. Well, very interesting. I appreciate well, the update. I didn't know that we were ready for that already. Sure, yeah, and we're looking to open right uh, in August. So um, there is a timeline, and uh, we'll be able to um, release some of that information online. Um, if you go to the New Hanover County Schools website, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a link to the high school um, here by the end of October. Very good. Well, Duke Wallen, thank you. We'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. There are so many fun things we all can do to be healthier, no matter who you are or where you are. So let's move. Well, here we go. Let's stretch in the grass. What a play. Let's play tag. Wow. Unbelievable. Let's jump up and down. Oh, -ho! what a way to finish it. And most of all, let's eat better so that we have the energy we need to play an hour a day every day. Everyone can play. Just go to letsmove.gov to learn more. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. We hope you've enjoyed our program today. The Cape Fear Habitat for Humanity Turkey Trot will take place Thanksgiving morning at Wrightsville Beach. To sign, up for more, to sign up or for more information, visit their website at capefearhabitat.org or call 762-4744. For more information on the Career and Technical High School, you can call 362-7882 or email ctehsinfo at nhcs.net. You can also follow them on Twitter at hashtag NHCSCTE. And tune into our show starting October 31st for a full in-depth look at the CTE High School. Finally, for information on Amigos International, you can call 341-0007 or visit their website at amigosinternational.org. Now, if you ever have any questions about any of the topics that we discussed here on our show today, you can call the School Systems Public Relations Office at 254 4180 or check out the school systems website at www.nhcs.net. I'm Sheila Evans. Thanks for joining me today.